Доброго дня, дорогі друзі. Good afternoon, dear friends. We continue our series of presentations concerning perception of Ukraine abroad, and we go to the next panel that is dedicated to the research of perception of Ukraine in Turkey. I am Nadia Kaval. I am the head of uh, Information and Analytical Department of the Ukrainian Institute, and I'm a moderator of this discussion. I would like to introduce our panelists. Part of them will be online, part of them offline. We will start maybe with the author of the research that will present the main conclusions, uh, Evgeny Gaber, Gaber, advisor to the Prime Minister of Ukraine including in relations with Turkey and the uh, uh, And also we have the honor to greet uh, our panel, extraordinary and plenipotentiary ambassador of Ukraine to Turkey, Andriy Sribiga. Thank you very much for joining our today's discussion. It will be really interesting to hear your thoughts concerning this research. And we have two more panelists, experts. Alexandra Galenka, um, specialist of the uh, in Turkish language uh, at the Institute of Philology uh, of Kiev National University, named after Trashevchenko, PhD, and also a film producer who actively work uh, in. Uh, uh, Okay, and in Georgia, and it will be interesting to hear from her, Alena Yershova. Uh, so please, we start with Evgenia. Uh, she will uh, speak about conclusions of this research, what were the insights, and what are the prospects for um, Ukrainian uh, perception in Turkey. I uh, greet all the colleagues. It's a pleasure to be in such a wonderful company. We thank uh, you, the Ukrainian Institute and the Renaissance Foundation for this research, for the initiation of this research. Uh, going forward, I need to say that one of the comprehensive recommendations from all the respondents was the wish to see cultural diplomacy in uh, Turkey, not to see separate events, but events that would be united by a single umbrella, by a strategy. And during the first panel, we've mentioned this, that this should be based on analysis, on research, on real data. And this should be based on in-depth interviews, um, uh, what people know about us, what is expected from us. So first conclusions concerning this report is that this was really timely. So I have been dealing with the um, uh, matters of Turkey uh, for many years, and I worked in Turkey, and uh, for me, I hope these results will be uh, useful as well as uh, it, um, for the diplomats. And I would like to thank uh, Ukrainian PRISM and the uh, with whom we conducted the research. And we thank the embassy for comprehensive support uh, in uh, this research and all the respondents for their interesting insights. Going back to presentation, I would like to say that there is a lot of information and the research on the whole. In essence, these are more than 30 hours of interviews. It's not possible to tell about all the aspects, but uh, as I've said, this research will be available on the site of the Ukrainian Institute, so you may find this presentation there. I have a presentation concerning perception of Ukraine uh, abroad in Turkey. 
and about uh, uh, opportunities for developing cultural diplomacy and the areas that are the most interesting uh, in Turkey. So about perception, there are, as usual, two news. One of them is good and one of them is not so good. Let's start with the good news. Ukraine on the whole is perceived in Turkey as a country without problems. The prevailing majority of associations, both in expert circles and uh, common people, uh, they said that there is no problems with this country. There are no negative associations connected with the burden of problems, uh, some difficult past or contradictions that exist now in bilateral relations. So this may be perceived as a bottom line on which we should work further. The second news that is not so good as the first one is that Unfortunately, in Turkey, not many people know about Ukraine. It was interesting to hear from the respondents that uh, even several years ago in Turkey, people even didn't know where Ukraine is on the map, what uh, is the capital of Ukraine, and uh, common uh, people in Turkey didn't perceive Ukraine as a separate nation. There are several aspects mentioned by the speakers. This is not connected with the negative uh, activity on uh, or Ukrainian diaspora or institu uh, cultural institutions in Turkey. Uh, everyone mentioned that situation. the situation improved during the last several years. Historically, Ukraine have never been the partner of Turkey as a separate independent nation. It was perceived as a part of bigger dimension. So also there is limited information about Ukraine and its culture. I will speak about it later on. Uh, people were asked whether they know some Ukrainian writers, actors, uh, painters. Often they say maybe no, but maybe we know them, but we do not know that they are Ukrainian. And this is not only about Chekhov, Gogol. They ask, for example, we perceive it as big Russian culture. We do not know whether this is a Ukrainian or non-Ukrainian writer. Ukraine is perceived as a part of something bigger. And the third main conclusion, um, so this is potential that is not used. Uh, so this research was carried out in Turkish language, and um, this potential that exists, especially in the sphere of cultural and humanitarian cooperation, but this potential is not fully implemented, and we should develop it further. And uh, Ukraine is not separated from the region. Uh, that is the perception of Turkey. And why is it so? One of the prevalent answers I heard was that the relations uh, between Turkey and Ukraine, and this is stated in the history books that uh, these relations went through capitals of other countries. For example, this is Russia and other nations. When you ask experts who work uh, in the region, uh, we ask, uh, how do you perceive Ukraine? What are your associations? They say this is a uh, part of the Soviet Union, there is big Soviet heritage, this is Eastern Bloc country, 
this is a part of big Russian imperial cultural space. And uh, now we are more perceived as a part of uh, uh, Southern Eastern Europe. And uh, during the Turk times, uh, they said if uh, there, w were no, uh, there was no Black Sea, then uh, we would have uh, land with the word uh, Ukraine. And this is Southern Europe or Lechistan, and this is historically Poland. So they do not know uh, much about Ukraine. And there is a um, stable association with uh, Russia. And uh, the context this association appeared before 2014. They, speak about, they spoke about uh, brotherly nation and uh, that uh, this is one nation, two states, uh, as well as uh, Armenia has the relationship with Azerbaijan, uh, common culture, a lot of similarities. But after 2014 and even after 2014 or 2015, uh, there was some time for explanation about what happened in 2014. After the start of Russian aggression in Ukraine, so this perception is connected with Russia, but the perception is opposite, not similarity, but opposite opinion. So those journalists who cover events in the region, they say that Ukraine, they said that Russia, uh, Ukraine is Russia. And after 2014, they um, state that Ukraine is not Russia. Uh, Ukraine is liberal democracy that tries to promote human rights and to uh, protect its European um, uh, values and uh, now there is explanation due to diplomatic missions and due to their next um, Crimean Tatar associations that bring information about what is going on in Crimea after 2014 and uh, if we speak about positive things, this was positive aspect that we formed as a separate nation in a common perception in Turkey. And even our community that carried out this interview, she said that this processes of nation formation, these were stimulated by 2014 events, and they started to, to differentiate themselves uh, in Turkey as a diaspora from Ukraine. About perception, Ukraine is perceived positively in the context of protection of human rights on the whole, uh, including the human rights of Crimean Tatars, uh, democracy, fight for justice, uh, free spirit, uh, uh, people who value freedom, and uh, these are positive things. Um, and uh, um, when you hear about this from other people, you um, have done a different view. And, uh, Ukraine is perceived not only as uh, defenders of Crimean Tatars and territorial integrity, but also this is connected to uh, uh, Turk uh, communities. And starting Soviet times for us, Ukraine was associated with human rights defenders movements. Petro Grigorenko, and uh, it, he is not mentioned a lot, but we speak with the representatives of Crimean Tatars. Um, it is said repeatedly, like uh, Mr. Sakurov, they uh, protected the rights of uh, Crimean Tatars during Soviet times. And in a broader context, uh, this uh, person uh, embodies whole Ukrainian people because this is 
person with dignity. This is a person who was human rights defender. And uh, he had free spirit and uh, uh, justice and um, uh, people uh, disseminated his works. Um, and uh, Ukraine as a symbol of liberal political culture, this is a big positive thing that should be used. And possibly one more important issue that is uh, how it's connected to uh, the Turk communities, Meskitins, Gagauz, Crimean Tatars who live in Ukraine. All these communities have the right uh, for self identification and. Uh, this could become the could be made the basis for positive rebranding of Ukraine because uh, as part of the interview outside the interview we were discussing it a lot and the colleagues said to get out of this Soviet type perception Ukraine has to promote its own positive brand and in Turkey, that could be liberal, multicultural, inclusive country where different social groups, uh, ethnical groups have the right for self-identification. And this way they would be uh, dif this way they we can differentiate them from Russia. And instead of the imposed uh, image of uh, the split between East and West, this could be turned into the positive uh, narrative that uh, we don't have just East or West. Every region has its own language, its own culture. And that means that we are very multicultural. And uh, this way we would promote a lot of positive ideas, which will be perceived positively. Another issue is uh, uh, search for own identity, permanent movement, and that's what we hear from Ukrainians uh, who live in Turkey and from Turks, uh, that uh, we are moving forward all the time and we are a new breath in the culture. A negative side of that is everything that is related to instability, weak state institutions, turbulence. The fact that we are developing is a big uh, uh, positive thing, but there is also a perception uh, that uh, Ukraine is not a subject, but uh, an object of international uh, relations, the object of interest of the US and Russia that all events uh, that happened in Maidan and after Maidan, that's the struggle of third forces taking place on our territory. That is present uh, among the even average Turks. Uh, they believe that Ukraine, just like Turkey, is uh, a victim in the struggle of some third forces and also there are some negative stereotypes like uh, sex tourism, human trafficking, and uh, other things. Uh, the corruption, uh, also um, what I've heard from the representatives of uh, experts, uh, it's uh, that Ukrainians uh, are not ready to work for the result. Everything related to corruption is one thing, but uh, the fact that Ukrainians are to be interested in working with Turks, even though Ukrainians need it maybe even more. And uh, then there's a problem with cultural communication, with establishing contacts and uh, such uh, a pragmatic, uh, mentality is what Ukrainian agents lack. I heard from Turk 
Turkish colleagues that that is one of the biggest obstacles that hamper us in work. Uh, two more slides and I will finish with presentation. I know that uh, my colleagues have a, a lot to say. The uh, positive associations are beautiful women, nature, tasty cuisine, hospitable country, all that are big uh, advantages. Talking about uh, negative things, uh, all these stereotypes uh, imposed will disappear when uh, more people learn about Ukraine. Talking about cultural diplomacy, and perception of cultural phenomena. This could be put into words in such a words. You cannot be interested in something that you do not know that, that it exists. We are ready to perceive what will be offered to us. Many of respondents were asking, uh, requesting to send detailed information about writers or some um, persons and culture about who they did not know, but this military political security component in bilateral relations prevails. When you ask what Ukraine is associated with, what can you say, can you name at least some of the artists? Um, one of the experts said, I can name all the presidents of Ukraine. I can uh, give you names of the drones that we sell to Ukraine, but I cannot uh, think of a single name of a writer, artist, or actor that would be associated with Ukraine. So most of the phenomena that uh, uh, people know in Turkey about Ukraine is what is uh, related to our common historical heritage, and um, uh, we can talk uh, about that uh, a lot. The ambassador of Ukraine, Mr. Andriy Sibiga, knows about that, and uh, all these things are well perceived in Turkey. On the other hand, these are some collective images like Vorsha Vashvanka embroidered uh, blouse or something related to political um, phenomena since Sovgoloda, Mor, Chernobyl, Maidan, all that with the exception of the names of football teams and Shevchenko, who's a football player but not a writer, Andriy Shevchenko, not Taras Shevchenko, and then thanks to Eurovision, Ruslana and uh, Jamala, that's all people know about Ukrainian culture. Uh, on that, I will stop. If you have any questions, uh, some specific questions, uh, I will be happy to answer them later. Thank you, Evgenia, for your very detailed uh, presentation and uh, my question is, what can we do with all that? And I would like to ask Mr. Ambassador Andriy Ivanovich, what are the priorities in the cultural diplomacy in Turkey? You and the embassy participated in the survey. You know the results of the survey. How will you use them in your work? Good afternoon, esteemed audience. It's uh, really uh, very interesting, and it's uh, um, uh, an honor to participate in this discussion. In Istanbul, we have the meeting of coordinators uh, of uh, founding the new uh, format Quadriga, which means two plus two. It's a beautiful word, basically, but our today's consultations with the Turkish friends confirmed that we can talk in the categories good and very good. Evgenia, who I respect a lot, I believe that you started from not good and bad news, but from good and objective news, and I will talk 
uh, about good and very good news. I will start from appreciations and gratitude to experts who, for the first time in history of Ukrainian-Turkish relations, uh, uh, have uh, done this very deep survey. That's a diagnosis with the very correct recipe. What is important for me, uh, both sides participated in this survey. And uh, uh, this is an opportunity to think of some uh, priorities uh, in our work. So reforming, uh, talking about what to do with that, we are doing th already something. Also, um, another um, issue, I would like to thank all the, uh, but the uh, workers of the uh, embassy. We um, were pioneers in something, or we uh, put foundation in some other things. I believe that that is something that is happening. We can say that it could be uh, good or better, but uh, and that is what uh, the sound got interrupted. Can we restore the uh, connection? We have some technical issues. One second. Виглядає на те, що власне трансляція у нас за It looks like that uh, um, the technical issue on the Turkish side and then when the connection is restored we will give the chance to Mr. Ambassador to finish what he started talking. Now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Alexander Galenka. We've heard uh, the main uh, uh, conclusions uh, uh, made in survey, but also there's one more uh, statement that Ukraine should uh, look at the southern direction of politics. Uh, open up or discover Turkey. That's what I've been working on. The conclusion from this uh, survey, perception of Ukraine in Turkey, is such. Turks want to know about Ukraine, but they don't know, because Ukrainians do not offer such knowledge. Ukrainians also would like to offer something to Turks, but what they offer is either not interesting for Turks, or they don't know what to offer. And what should be the messages, short, such that would correspond to the interests of uh, Ukrainian and uh, Turkish uh, side. As a historian who's been working in uh, this uh, on this topic, I've dedicated um, all my professional life to the history of Turkey and relations between Ukraine and Turkey.
It's working, everything's fine. So I show my brief uh, conclusion here. It's about frames, about simple messages that Ukraine could offer to Turks. It's not about imposing, it's about an offer. As always, in the market of ideas, I offer my idea, but my idea is based, should be based on objective data, because we will not be able to uh, establish long-term relations if the data is wrong. For Ukrainians to offer something for Turks, they need to understand what Ukraine is. Unfortunately, the fact that Ukrainians do not perceive themselves as the citizens of Ukraine is the conflict of with Russia. Uh, when the Russians declared part of the territory of Ukraine as Novorossiya, what was the reaction? None of the reaction. And that is why Russian Federation declares its rights on part of the territory of Ukraine. Let's look at what is Ukraine from the point of view of objective uh, knowledge. This is the map of Ukrainian colonization, which shows how the territory of Ukraine was settled. It all started from uh, northwest uh, part uh, of the country in darker color. That's how the history of Ukraine started from the history of Kyiv Rus. I'm sorry. North and western corner of Ukraine is the uh, first territory of the of Kiev Russia. The blue line shows uh, how the territory was settled at the moment of uh, when Ukraine was uh, joined to Russia, uh, taking into account the Russian message that it was Russia that gave this territory as a gift to us. You will see that objective data certified that Ukrainians were settling the South themselves. I will not tell more about this map, but I will tell you. Turkey is presenting itself as a country of 13 civilizations that existed on the territory of Turkey, and they were replacing each other, and finally we have Turkey. What does Ukraine think about itself? Ukraine thinks that we are between the West and the East. We are not here, not there. Talking about civilization, Ukraine is the zone where three civilizations coexisted. The steppe type civilization, which covers two thirds of the territory of Ukraine. And this history starts uh, 1,500 years uh, before the history of Kyiv Rus. Now, let's think. Turks um, inherited the steppe civilization. Where is their motherland? It's in Mongolia. It's another uh, issue how they got to this territory. This is a part of Turkish history that Ukraine 
uh, participated in and to whom the territory in the south belong. This is the territory of Turkish motherland, and Turkish motherland is where the capital was situated. Turk uh, um, kingdom was there, and uh, Ukraine is a part of this territory. If you want to hear next conclusion, and it is simple. Uh, uh, Turks live 700 years more than those who live in the territory of Turkey. So Ukrainians got this part from Turks. So Ukraine got the territory. It, uh, it is the orange gem for uh, Turkish people and Ukrainian and Turks, they have a joint history, and this is a territory of Ukraine, and the Ukrainians um, uh, got this territory throughout the history, so you see this uh, um, area that is uh, colored in yellow, and they got this territory. Let's move forward. And the uh, Ukrainians, they are shy concerning their achievements. Look at uh, uh, Kiev Ras um, territory. And uh, this territory was inhabited. And there are gray areas that were also uh, inhabited. And when Ukraine proposed itself to a Moscow kingdom, it is also uh, colored gray, and it uh, got the name of uh, uh, the wild field, wild steppe. So Ukrainians well to the territory that uh, didn't belong to everyone, but it belonged to, to someone, and Turkish people, they know to whom it belonged. So we have a conflict. Due to our relations, we have two traumas, Ukrainian trauma and the Turkish trauma. And the uh, Turkish trauma is in the fact that uh, Turkish uh, Turks lost uh, the, uh, the uh, struggle with Moscow. And the Ukraine is related to Moscow. And from the other side, we have one more trauma that is connected with the slave trade. Very difficult uh, relations with uh, Turkey. So these are the pictures of Polish painter, Popil. One of them illustrates a Tatar invasion, another. Uh, the uh, Bosphorus uh, uh, captive, uh, the captives in uh, Bosphorus region. Uh, do we have some traces? What that there was a serious problem historically. Uh, Twenty years ago, I started to um, provide information to the public. Uh, concerning history of Ukrainians in uh, Istanbul. This is about those Ukrainians uh, whom we know uh, through documents. Uh, these are Osman dynasty members. These are women, and this tradition continues. Women, they are the majority of the diaspora. The diaspora we know. Some mosques were built, and uh, there are many of them. You may see them uh, in Istanbul, Jilgalgir, 
in the right corner, this is the mosque um, to commemorate the son of Roxalana, and also the uh, mosque near mayor's office, and it was built in the name of the first son. These are two mosques that were built by Migrimach. You may see two minarets, and uh, she was the daughter, and then she married Rustam Vashur. She went to another dynasty, and there was only one uh, minaret. And, uh, These are monuments connected with the name of another son of Raksalana and Suleiman, Selim, that became a sultan. I Aya Safiya. They were um, ordered and funded by the family and the director. He uh, also was buried in the territory of Sofia, and uh, uh, also Edirne. Uh, and also uh, the Sultan Sultan, uh, they uh, built a mosque near uh, the uh, Galib uh, Bridge in Istanbul. She built two fortresses, Kunkalia, uh, near Dardanelle Strait. And uh, last week, uh, Turks celebrated uh, the victory in Dardanelle campaign. And those fortresses that she funded, they participated in this campaign. So this is a part of today's uh, uh, glorifying narrative. What is the key? In what way Ukrainians were able to uh, master those territories? How did they manage to do this? Ukrainians. Uh, they learn from Turkish, from peop uh, people from the steppes, because Turkish culture was developed in the territory. 1,500 uh, uh, years from uh, Kiev, Ross, and even uh, thousands of years before th this period. Uh, so, uh, Ukrainians uh, learned from Turks, and you remember Ukrainian uh, Gopak, Hop, Gop, Hopak dance, and uh, there are many interpretations where it comes from. Uh, these are exercises to ride a horse, and Ukraine also mastered the Scythian shot. And it was used uh, 3,000 years ago uh, in uh, this region. So, uh, tech and Ukrainians, they learn how to fight, how to use land, and they got many important information from Turkey. And this is a picture from Eneida by Katlerievsky. And also some exotic things, for example, uh, Sekis and Chikaldeha, uh, Aiva. And uh, this is the spirit drinks. I won't provide further explanation. And now you see that Ukrainian and Turkish culture, they are closely interrelated. One of the messages 
from me to Turkey, not that, that Ukrainians be able to um, separate themselves from the Russian narrative. We may say that Ukrainians and Russians, they are different people, but they are different because uh, Ukrainians, uh, they communicated a lot with the Turkey, and the Russians didn't learn from Turkey, and uh, uh, when Ukrainians joined them, they got this knowledge from Ukrainians. In this report, uh, the Turk, uh, we should understand that uh, Turkish people, they want to see what belongs to them. They are interested in Scythians, uh, Osman fortresses, Crimean Tatars, and in the report, this is not uh, uh, even Ukraine. If we look at Ukraine in such a way, uh, so this is a part of Ukraine. This is an important uh, part of Ukrainian history. And uh, what should be the message, message? What frame should we establish? And we should rethink ourselves. We are speaking about uh, family relations. So, uh, so, uh, uh, Turks trained the Cossacks, uh, they called them Kardash Kazak when they uh, fought together, and uh, when they fought against each other, they called them Cossacks, uh, brothers that do not obey. So there are many legends, there are many uh, poems concerning some similarity between Turks and Ukrainians. So, for example, uh, mother recognizes um, granddaughter in um, captivity, or a brother sells his sister to captivity. So these are complex relationships. And uh, the motto should be that Ukrainians and Turks, uh, they are brothers, but they do not know about it. So we have a common origin. Uh, so did we restore the connection with Mr. Ambassador? Please, Mr. Ambassador, I would like to give you an opportunity to uh, continue with your speech. Do you hear me? Thank you very much. Sorry for this technical problem. Going back to thanks concerning successful project, uh, we thank all our workers for what was done. We thank all the leaders of uh, Ukrainian communities that uh, are ambassadors of culture, and uh, in different ways they implement the um, basis of cultural democracy, of soft power, and also I'd like to thank those um, uh, creative people who work in Turkish market. And uh, uh, our colleague is uh, here with us today. And uh, uh, I would like to speak about the format of cooperation. We have uh, informa more information about uh, Ukraine and Turkey, and I would like to speak about some details. 
I often like to quote uh, Eastern philosopher Mevlan Rami. And uh, I would like to quote him. A joint language and understanding will be found by, not by those uh, who speak one language, but those who um, share common views and vision. And uh, this uh, uh, quote from Rami may be used in the context of modern understanding of cultural diplomacy and its main goals. Of course, there are many definitions of cultural diplomacy. This is about sharing of ideas, sharing of information, and uh, sharing of different components of culture. In the globalized world of today, the role of cultural diplomacy as the brightest uh, component of the soft power will only increase, and there are new challenges and opportunities that are created by digital diplomacy. Ukraine started to use this um, means of cultural diplomacy uh, not a long time ago, and uh, sometimes we are too emotional. It is really important that those tasks and goals uh, that we form concerning public or cultural diplomacy, they should not uh, um, make a dissonance with those uh, processes that are going inside. There should be uh, unanimity, and uh, I agree that uh, we should brand our country properly, and that there should be proper narratives, uh, there should be proper strategy, not only in Turkey, but in any country. There should be proper regional approaches. What works successfully in Turkey will work in the Turk world on the whole and in the region. That's why there should be strategic views and narratives, because of positive image and positive branding and positive institute of the foreign audience uh, to the narratives uh, and self-marketing and promotion of the state it is all reached by the instruments of cultural diplomacy. And there should be clear national interests in this. There should be proper aim, not just protection for protection. And uh, I see this in the research that some measures are one-time measures, others are sporadic. Some measures were elements of some um, strategies and directions. Maybe this would cause some um, fragment vision of the whole picture. We should take into account that our public diplomacy, it is a valuable element to counteract uh, hybrid uh, warfare in different regions in the world, including in this uh, country where I work, and uh, we should overcome negative stereotypes, and we should form understanding an audience to provide positive image of Ukraine. When I say the word image, you should clearly understand what stands behind it. This is not just a word or a term. There should be clear understanding of terminology and the content, both practical and theoretical ones. Uh, different models of implementation are used. Uh, and uh, that's implementation of cultural diplomacy. In Turkey, such instruments are to be adapted. And we need to take into account the specific features of the country, history, religion, and that has been reflected in this survey. And what is important? It is very important, the geography where events are taking place, the level of participation. You can say that there were many events that took place, but you need to look at the audience. Who was present? What's the level? Uh, what uh, how what what about the coverage of that i agree with the what is present in this survey 
the event should be organized not for the sake of the event. It should serve a certain goal. I hope that uh, uh, the Ukrainian Institute and this survey will become uh, the basis of strategic presence. in such a region and we have both the basis and the instruments uh, three diplomatic uh, bodies in Ankara, Istanbul, Istanbul and Antalya, six Ukrainian communities which are a very important factor for implementation of public diplomacy also the demand for Ukrainian content and I cannot but mention Crimean Tatar diaspora, which is a very important bridge between our states and nations. And that makes contribution uh, into deepening of Ukrainian-Turkish relations. They are the environment which will help uh, implement uh, very important uh, cultural diplomacy events. Then there was uh, another example given, I was quoted, that Ukraine has uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the place uh, which is not uh, was not very high. We moved to the eighth position. We are on the eighth position in the rating of perception as a friendly state. That opens up new opportunities for us. And that is something that uh, uh, had to happen. I agree with the authors of survey. Evgenia has mentioned it already that Ukraine is present in Turkish mass media and that's related to political dialogue. And there is an advice provided that you need to be more present in mass media, but with what you should be present there? To be invited by journalists, you are to be interesting. There should be a background certain background and uh, there should be a policy uh, directed towards presence in mass media. I believe that the information uh, event should be formed uh, on the basis of this survey. This could be achieved uh, uh, thanks to social media because uh, Turkey is in among top three countries which uh, uh, use uh, social media mostly. And this will allow to be present in media content. You can organize many different events, but if no one uh, covers these events, then they were organized just for the minimum audience. It all should be accompanied by a right media campaign, and that's uh, a real art. And the workers of the embassy uh, should play an important role in that. And we will make conclusion as to the what should be done in our work. I'd like to mention more about our experience in Turkey. I agree with all these positive associations that people get when communicating to the audience that was an audience of experts. But in half a year, in a year, you will not be able to overcome all the stereotypes. I support the approach of uh, defining the narratives or statements, messages, which are to be clearly directed. For that, 
we have all the needed uh, tools in Turkey to achieve uh, or to um, do what we need. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. We have a very hot discussion. The time is over. We would like to listen to hear from uh, Olena Yershova, who works in Turkey. Are you with us? Yes, sir. We'd like to ask you, what are the main challenges for the work of the artists in Turkey and what support of the state would be most important for you? First of all, I would like to thank Ukrainian Institute. I believe that this is very important uh, survey. And we can feel that finally that has become strategically important. Previously, I felt that it was done just from time to time. There was no strategy behind. It was interesting to read also this whole survey. I saw that Some of the problems are mentioned by many of the respondents, like the problem of development of business is a problem from the point of view of Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine is perceived uh, as a corrupt state and many Turks with who I work mentioned that. There is this understanding that there's no transparency in procedures, no transparency in business. And that is true not only about the movie industry, but uh, many other industries. On the other hand, I'm not a sociologist. For me, it was interesting to read this uh, survey uh, because I work in such a sphere. Uh, I'm interested in what people think about us. I ask Turks all the time. Yesterday, I had a discussion with a person who's not my target audience. That was a, a um, Navy officer. And I asked him, what do you think about Ukraine? It was interesting to listen to Alexander. He said that he thinks that Ukraine is Kardesh, a brother. And when they uh, go to, uh, when they enter Ukrainian waters in the Black Sea, they feel themselves safe. And that was very important. These were like three sentences. And I could feel myself uh, like a person who was taking interview. In two, three sentences, he gave a very important message. And I believe that this message is to be developed. I am from film industry, but I believe that the military and strategic cooperation are to be developed. Because in Turkey, uh, we, we need to feel that Turkey is our strategic partner. And uh, what is in this survey? And that's what Mr. Ambassador mentioned, the presence of mass media. That's what is uh, not sufficient. There should be a strategy about that. For example, the situation with Crimean Tatars. As Ukrainian, I know what's happening in Crimea with Crimean Tatars. The Muslim uh, cultural centers are closed. The Tatars are arrested. They are persecuted. Turks do not know about that. Maybe Crimean Tatar diaspora knows that, but not Turks, because that's in Ukrainian mass media. That's present there. I read it in Ukrainian. 
newspapers, internet, media, but it's not present in Turkey. There should be some strategy on that, on how to present such news in Turkey. Now, talking about cultural diplomacy, I believe that the target audience should be students, because students in Turkey, this is a, a huge uh, uh, part of uh, youth. Uh, my son was uh, entering the university. There were two million young people who were uh, applying for the university. This number is huge. Then Virsky group is uh, uh, arrives. That's great, but that shouldn't be the priority. The priority should be what should be of interest for young people, people who read, uh, who are interested in something. And for me, why Russian avant-garde was uh, presented in Sabanji Museum. We shouldn't be doing a little here, a little there. We need to bring Ukrainian avant-garde to Sabanji Museum. And believe me, the whole Stambul will see it. If there is the exhibition at Sabanji Museum, then you see the information about it everywhere. And then, based on this exhibition, you need to organize some round tables, some seminars, you need to get students interested. Some large projects are to be implemented. And the survey, again, shows in which direction we need to move in the cultural sphere. Also, book publishing. For example, I didn't know that Malkovich's book was published. I thought that there's a need to start from books for children. The sound gets interrupted, sorry. Uh, everything is about funding. What I see, well, there's a good project, but then there should be funding. We need to understand for what we have money, like books, Exhibition, I believe that the exhibition should be brought, vanguard or some uh, contemporary art. And based on the large project, we need to uh, organize some mini projects, like translate Kurkov. That's a great idea as well. Thank you, Olena. Unfortunately, the time is over. We had a very interesting dynamic panel. Uh, I'm sorry uh, if I had to interrupt you. Uh, thank you for your contribution into our discussion. Please uh, read the survey on the website of the Institute in Ukrainian and English, and at 4.30, we'll have a final panel, how Ukraine is perceived in the U.S. Thank you for attention. Thank you all.